。哇 ，look be careful， got crocodile。哎 ，no 啦 ，that one is iguana。No， that one is komodo dragon。呃 ，excuse me， is kodomo dragon。Let's find out about that in our little red jungle。Often mistaken for its other lizard cousins, this here is actually a monitor lizard, and more specifically, the Malayan water monitor. Also known as Varanus salvator, these gentle giants are distributed around South and Southeast Asia. In Singapore, there are actually three different native species of monitors. But apart from their body size, coloration, and body patterns, the most distinctive way to recognize a Malayan water monitor is by observing the position of its nostrils. On the Malayan water monitor, their nostrils are closer to the tip of their snouts, whereas in the other two species, their nostrils are located midway between their eyes and their snouts. But if we zoom out from just our local monitors, how exactly do we tell them apart from other lizards? Well, let's first get the iguanas out of the way. Apart from having a single row of spines that trails down from its head to its tail, which is absent in monitor lizards, iguanas are native only to Central and South America. And although there have been sporadic sightings of iguanas in Singapore, it is illegal to have them as pets or to introduce them into our natural spaces. So you won't usually see them around in the wild. As for crocodiles, we do have a native population here in Singapore, but you can differentiate a crocodile from a monitor by looking at its scales. Crocodiles have these bony plate protrusions on their body called scutes, while monitor lizards have scales that are more even and regular. Crocodiles also have teeth that are much more prominent, even with a closed jaw. But since we're on the topic of what's inside the mouth, the best way to recognize a monitor lizard is by observing its tongue. Aside from snakes, monitor lizards are the only other reptiles in Asia to have forked tongues. And similar to their legless snake relatives, these tongues help with their sense of smell. And their tongues are split and forked for that exact reason because the hulls can detect sand particles separately from two different directions. This allows monitor lizards and snakes to sense chemical gradients in a much more complex way, basically allowing them to smell in 3D. Hey, then you say only snakes and monitor lizards have forked tongue. Then that time I watched that, what, the Net Geo, then I see the Komodo dragon, they also have forked tongue. Then why? Le? Because Komodo dragons, which are the largest lizards in the world, are actually a specific species of monitor lizard, and they are in the same Varanus genus. However, for the Komodo dragon, they have a very restricted geographical range, and they can only be found in a few selected islands in Indonesia. So actually, uh, it's not that hard to differentiate a monitor lizard from an iguana, a crocodile, or a Komodo dragon. But there is still a lot to be proud of of these animals. Yes, they are not the largest lizards like the Komodo dragon, but they are the second largest. Ah. Eh, still quite cool. However, despite their size, they are still super shy and timid. But be warned, if cornered and left with no other choice, these monitors won't hesitate to use their sharp claws, teeth, and strong whip-like tails for defense. And although they do secrete venom, just like many other lizards, their venom is actually mild to humans. But if you ever get bitten, please go and get medical help just to make sure that everything is okay. Especially since their saliva contains a myriad of infection-causing bacteria, which derives from the type of food they eat. Apart from hunting small animals, fishes, and eggs, these monitor lizards also enjoy scavenging on carrion which they can smell from afar. And what's crazier is that this animal is also known to feed on dead human bodies if they ever come across one. Okay, I know that sounds very scary, but their role as a scavenger is what makes them so important ecologically. Because apart from aiding in biomass recycling and keeping the environment beautiful, they actually help prevent the spread of diseases that may occur when you have carcasses lying all around. 
So it goes to show that every individual has an important and respectable part to play even when they may be doing the dirty work. And that is all we have for today's episode. Add me on Instagram and Facebook and all those fancy stuff and don't forget to subscribe if you want to watch more videos of our local ecology. Thanks for watching and remember, keep your eyes peeled because it is a jungle out there. Okay, bye. <laughs>